Before I continue my story, some of you might be curious as to why I didn't use my magic to revive my child or my wife. Or even Grand Ruler multiple times. Have you ever heard of the phrase, dead is better? It's something I've learned and something I've heard over time. It's a message, meaning don't try to use resurrection spells because you might not know who you might get. You might get your child or your wife, or you might get some sort of mad, deformed, degenerate who will end up starting to kill you slowly and slower. I personally believe in that. And besides, Mimic didn't have any spells to bring him back to life. <laughs> the dead coming back? <laughs> A fairy idea. Everyone knows the dead don't come back to life. They stay dead. Forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, I went back in time. And I killed Grand Ruler. And told myself about Mimics' spell so that way I could be born. And I went back to my own timeline. And of course, nothing changed. Cadence was still dead, Flurry was still dead. Everything was still the way it was, the way the world had been. But then I began to think. I could kill Grand Ruler every single month that he had been alive during the year that I was in exile. But what if I went back in time and killed Grand Ruler just before Keynes died? Would it distract from the Monster of the Week from arriving and killing him? Would it stop the monsters? Would it disevolve Starfleet? What would happen if I were to kill Grand Ruler when my wife and child were alive? Would I fade away? Well, of course not. After all, I would have to be a Paradox spell. But even the Paradox spell has its time limits. Uh, you could keep a paradox feel around you when you're using that time spell for at most 10 minutes. And then after which, the time paradox would begin to affect you. You would immediately change. Something would happen to you and you would be wiped from existence. Or change. But, my family. We're intelligent beings. We're investigators. We love to go in and see what happens. We love to run tests. We love to experiment. We love to write. We are creative people. My father was one of the best in the field of science during his time in the Royal Guard. My mother was a well-established novelist. And, of course, I was part of the investigation units on the Royal Guard back when I was captain. And, of course, we all know Twiley. So I decided to investigate. I used the time spell to warp myself back to one year before I became Dark King. Back when Cadence was still alive and Little Flurry was still there. Before I traveled over to New Canterlot, I made a stop at Crystal Empire. I didn't let myself be seen, of course. I just stayed in the background and looked at my wife. My angel. My love song. She was so beautiful. So lovely. A part of me just wanted to reach out and touch her. To hold her once again. And then past me stepped into the throne room. And then I realized she already had the best thing to, in her life. Her husband. Me. I couldn't take death from her. So I just smiled, made my way into Flurry's bedroom, <laughs> the little six-year-old scamp. I think she almost woke up when I stepped in. She did, actually. When she opened her eyes and saw me in my dark armor, she did the most amazing thing ever. 
She laughed. She laughed at me and said I looked silly in my armor like I was the most fun thing to look at. Perhaps I was. I mean, underneath the armor, I'm still her father. So I gave her one final hug, kissed her on the forehead, and told her to sleep well, my little angel. Then I made my way to New Canterlot. I gotta admit, when I first appeared in that throne room in front of Grand Ruler, I did play up my Dark King aspect. Believe it or not, it's quite fun to play up the role of the big bad. Yes, I stepped in, bragged about who I was. Did my big booming voice, I am Dark King! I am here to destroy your pylons and steal your vegetables! And all that. <laughs> Dark King actually took me, uh, Grand Ruler took me seriously. <laughs> and of course I pretended to have generals, and then I said, But I must request that I challenge you, Grand Ruler. I didn't say Grand Celestial Ruler because I found out that was a lie. Yeah, the Grand Celestial Ruler doesn't exist. It was some sort of illusion created by Grand Ruler's weird little trihorn crown and that orb of reality of his that he keeps hidden within his throne room. But he was nowhere near that. All he had was the trihorn crown and the power of the magic, my power of mimic was so much more stronger than his crown that he couldn't affect me. I just had to laugh when I watched him rise up from his throne and prepared that corrupted magic he calls the Uniforce. And before he could even fire, my blade was in his stomach. And slowly, I made a nice long incision across his body, cutting through sinew and bone. Until finally, I ripped open his body and allowed his eternal organs to fall out. It was such a good feeling to watch his heart and lungs and intestines spill over the floor. And then with a wink, I burnt Celestia alive because I was tired of seeing her. And before Luna could enter the throne room to challenge me to a duel, I teleported away. And... This led me to stand on top of Mount Avalon, my cape furling in the breeze, and I looked out across Equestria, and I sighed, and I waited. I knew that if the Paradox were to come and to wipe me out from existence, it would happen within exactly ten seconds! So I counted the seconds away, singing to myself the lullaby I used to sing to Flurry so often, whistling it to myself, nine... Ten. Ten seconds passed. Nothing happened. The paradox did not occur. And I still stayed. I still remained Dark King. And I don't know why. <laughs>